Hi, I'm Pastor David Wendell, Assistant to the Bishop for Ministry and Ecumenism in the North American Lutheran Church. This is my sermon for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, the Gospel lesson for this weekend is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, the 1st to 20th verses. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, <clears throat> that the kingdom of God has come near. <clears throat> I tell you, Jesus said, it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes but it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. If you work in the church at all today, you know that the harvest is plentiful, but that it's getting harder and harder to find laborers. On the one hand, there's a growing shortage of of apostles, of pastors, willing to serve in the harvest as ordained laborers. And on the other hand, it's harder and harder to find even one or two, not to mention 70 folks in the church willing to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And why would people want to labor? Jesus himself says, see, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Can you imagine fluffy, cuddly, docile little sheep surrounded by hungry, snarling wolves? 
doesn't make you want to raise your hand and take on the challenge, does it? And then Jesus says, don't take anything with you when you go. He says, no purse, no bag, no sandals. If I were going out as lamb in the midst of wolves, I'd be thinking more along the lines of maybe a cattle prod to keep those wolves away, or at least a big stick to beat them off. But Jesus says specifically, take nothing with you, no purse, no bag, no sandals. Today that might translate to no briefcase, no laptop, no cell phone. No one today would consider accepting a job without those things. Today, both pastors and volunteers who accept a responsibility expect things to be well-planned and well-thought-out with appropriate training beforehand and encouragement and thanks after. And all the tools during. All of which seem to be lacking in this particular mission Jesus is talking about in our gospel lesson. Is it any wonder that there are so few labors given what Jesus the Lord says here? What we might expect is that the number of labors will not increase but decrease, and in fact, that's what appears to be happening. A steady decline in the number of workers in the kingdom of God, both ordained and lay. A growing unwillingness of people, even Christian people, to share the good news with others in our own families, neighborhoods, and communities, not to mention around the world. Which is what Jesus is talking about here, by the way. The reason Jesus chose to send 70 people was because that number sent a symbolic message. In fact, in the Bible, the number of the nations of the world was thought to have numbered 70. To send out 70 meant that this mission was not just to Jews, but to all the peoples of the world. Granted, these 70 didn't travel to the distant corners of the earth, but the message was not so much for them as for us. We understand what Jesus means as we read Luke's gospel. Jesus means that together with those 70, he needs others. He needs more and more people to go out into the fields to gather all the ripe people, so to speak, of the world into his kingdom. He needs more and more laborers who are willing to tell others in every corner of the world that in Jesus, God has come near to them. He says plainly, there are many, many people who are hurting, hungering, thirsting for the forgiveness, love, and salvation that he offers. Those are the fields just waiting to be harvested. People who are lonely, shamed, broken, feeling abandoned, feeling forsaken by family and friends, just waiting for good news, for the light of Christ to shine upon them. But Jesus also says plainly that he needs you and me to go to them, to reach out to them, to seek in our own way, in our own place, to share with them that in him, in Jesus, the kingdom of God comes near. The need is there, says Jesus, and the need is great. The only problem is there aren't many willing workers. Being a laborer for Christ just isn't attractive anymore. People don't feel they have the time anymore or the desire or the commitment. We may not feel we have the time or the desire or the commitment to share the gospel. So what can be done about the labor shortage in the kingdom of God? First, let's focus on what Jesus says is the most important thing that our names have been written in heaven. Part of the problem, I'm convinced, 
as we've lost sight of, the awareness of, the difference Jesus has made in our own lives. We get caught up in all kinds of things in life, getting excited, maybe not about the fact that we can cast out demons and tread on snakes, but we can certainly be distracted by the sports events taking place, our kids making the varsity team at school, our new job responsibilities at work. These are fine things to be sure, but Jesus says, don't let them keep you from celebrating the most important thing in life, that you have been saved. You may have many things to fill your time and make you happy in this life, but the motivating force, the power for living must come from the fact that your name, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. In spite of your sin and shortcomings, in spite of your shame and brokenness, in spite of your mistakes and failures in life, the truth is you are saved. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and was raised to give you the gift of life and hope, and courage, and confidence. St. Paul writes, May I, may we, never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world was crucified to me and I to the world. For through the cross we have learned that these other things don't really matter. For the new creation that we are in Jesus Christ is everything. And it is this good news, it's this freedom in our lives that gives us not only joy, but the strength and the motivation, the drive to want to labor in the fields, to want to share this good news with others. If not in Thailand or India, then in our own city, town, or village. If we're not called to share God's love in Senegal or Ukraine, then we are called to share it in our own neighborhood or corner of the world. If not by preaching from a pulpit or on a street corner, then by simply reflecting the light of Christ in all that we say and do. By giving glory to God in our speech and our behavior. As we are sometimes reminded, no one is expected to do everything, but everyone can do something. Jesus didn't expect one or two people to reach the corners of the world with the gospel, but he sent out 70. And they weren't expected to carry the burden alone individually, but in community, at least in teams of two. How we share the presence of God's kingdom in Jesus, and where, and when, isn't so important as that we share it, whenever and wherever and however we can, and that the power for that sharing, the courage to be a laborer for Christ, comes only from the cross of Christ. From the salvation we have received as a, as a wonderful, glorious gift, the salvation that even now is making of us a new creation that even now is creating in us, perhaps, a newfound desire, a newfound commitment to doing our part, to share God's love, to bring others to Christ, to live the faith we proclaim. We hope that the good news is at work in us and in other disciples, making us not just disciples, but apostles, ambassadors, and evangelists. That's what we hope. 
is happening. But let's not just hope. Jesus says, pray. Jesus says, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So, so let's ask. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as Jesus has instructed us, we pray you send laborers into your harvest. We realize at the same time that we are those laborers and that you're sending us as well. So give us willing hearts that are passionate for the spread of the love of Jesus Christ. Give us courage to speak up and to speak out when we meet those who are lonely, afraid, living in darkness. Whether as pastor or lay people, send us to do your work, bringing more and more to the light of Christ and the hope and promise of eternal life in him. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.